Hello everyone, Nadlab here. Today we're going to be making this sort of system where we have a map setup and obviously we can like get a bunch of maps as you can see like a whole bunch of variety of maps and we can obviously have our player and we can move from point to point. Uh, why would you want to make something like this? Well, you could use it as a level select screen. It makes it a lot more interesting and fun. I know Faster Than Light has it. This is totally not a copy of that mechanic from that game. But um, with that being said, in principle, it's very easy to make a map or system like this. There are many other ways to do it. I'll be showcasing one of them and uh, this might not be the best way to do it, but it's a way I found that works and you can obviously have your own set of maps. For example, if I always wanted to have a certain type of map, as you can see over here, um, we always get um, similar shapes, or at least uh, we can have our own points if we want to always specify something. Like, let's say we always want something in the top right. Uh, we can always specify that it will be over here with no change whatsoever. But we can also specify that we can also specify a general layout. For example, over here, we have this uh, like three by three pattern over here. And as you can see over here, uh, it will, for the most part, show up if we don't remove any points or do any sort of modification. For example, over here, you can see we always have the same map, very slight modifications to the positions of the where the map is. But you can see it's generally the same map and we can have that. Uh, being made so this is a very customizable system don't worry about that uh, but essentially let's get straight into it so if we're going to have a, a system where we have you know points on a map and we want to like you know connect them up uh, what are we going to need so obviously we need some sort of object to represent the points right we have points over here we need a player so we can always we need a red square that you know interacts with our clicks so we'll tell we'll tell it um, that when we click we want to obviously move our player from whatever point it's on to another point we need something like that and that's about it really the rest of it is actually in code where we connect uh, points together so we obviously want to connect these points it, it wouldn't make sense to connect uh, the leftmost point to the rightmost point so we have to have some sort of like way to measure distances and actually sort them and you know connect what's closest to each other to make a you know a sensible map. Uh, that's something we could use. Um, uh, for example, if we have one over here, then maybe this one will connect here like this, you know, uh, just something like that, something to connect the closest points, you know, given a, like a set of points. Uh, yeah, connect uh, some points given a set of points, like just connect them in a way that makes sense, which is easier said than done because connect them in a way makes that makes sense. That's a human term, like makes sense to a human. But how does that translate to computer code? Well, that's where I come in. And hopefully you just watch this tutorial and like understand the principles and make it yourself on your own time. I don't want you, I don't want people to follow along necessarily, but just at least watch and listen and understand that I'll be explaining the main concepts behind it. You can follow along as well. That's your choice. But I feel like my tutorials are more geared towards um, watching and listening and understanding the principles, taking time to pause where I tell you to pause and just think about how would you solve the problem. Anyway, enough ranting. Let's get into making this. So obviously uh, we have a cruiser. I like to call it a cruiser, which is just a sprite and a tween node. We don't need to do much here except for creating a signal for when it's done moving. Obviously have a signal for when it's um, the tween is done so we can emit the signal done moving. I think that's pretty self-explanatory because when we use the tween node, we're going to be like saying, oh, why don't you move to, right? That's how we're actually moving. That's how we're moving this red square. We're actually going to be saying uh, when you're over here, you know, once you're done making a tween to your next location, emit signal done moving for whatever reason. Like if you want to switch to a battle scene or go to a shop or something, that's what you would use the done moving scene for, uh, signal for. And obviously, how do we accomplish that? Well, we accomplish it with a tween. Uh, this is good out version 3.5. I know there's a new, new way to do a tween, but just for backwards compatibility, I'll be using the old way. And obviously set position, we don't really need this. It's just a helper function when we use it elsewhere, just to help set it. I mean, we could always do something else, but I chose this way. Anyway, that's enough for the cruiser or the red square, the player. And then we have a point. Um, this, not, this might not make much sense now, but all we have is a sprite and a position 2D. I'll come back to why we need to like calculate this margin variable, um, which is simply just getting the distance squared from the center to this position. The reason we need to calculate it is because I like making uh, things very simple. I don't like using area 2Ds. So uh, I don't like using area 2Ds in some instances. This is one, and we'll come back to that later. If you want an X pattern in your map, sure, go ahead. If you want some sort of boxy pattern like this, go ahead as well. Or if you just want to have some sort of testing triangle thing like I had set up, go ahead as well. But that's just a simple way. And you, you just have to have the same format of a bunch of positions wherever you want them. And uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. When you're making these point maps, uh, remember that you don't want to have them on the same position because that wouldn't be fun for the player. That wouldn't make sense. It's just a bit confusing. So yeah, just having them a bit farther apart would be nice. And uh, with that being said, we just have to get to the point map generator. So how do we actually generate these maps? Well, uh, also, we have restart manager here. I'm, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I made this a year ago, but I just made this a uh, simple manager to help handle the restarts. But now we can actually get into 
handling how we generate maps. Uh, just a forewarning, I know I said uh, I don't really usually, I, I don't consider my videos to be follow, the follow along time, but if you're following along, you would have your cruiser, right? You don't really need this line at the moment. You can have it if you want. Uh, we have this point map generator node, which is where we're going to be generating all the points and connecting them and making a map. We have our point over here. We don't really need this at the moment. And we have a restart manager. Well, okay. Uh, that's all we need but the main magic happens on this point map generator and we're just going to make a new script and we're going to you know work on this so how what do we do when we're making a map i would say we need a couple of variables to start off with which is our cruiser obviously we need to get reference to what our player is cruiser player same idea we have a map done just to make sure we know when the map is actually being done being made uh, we have our a star uh class or we have our a star object which is, which is an instantiation of the a star class if you don't know what i just said i'm basically saying a fancy i'm basically saying we're making a copy of this a star thing object what uh, instance class whatever you want to call it we're making a copy of it and we're going to be able to use all these fun pens, fancy properties over here we're going to be able to use this in our code and we have a couple of dictionaries here we're going to be working with points so each point over here is going to have its own id and we're going to be saving that into a dictionary. And then we're going to save each point itself, like the, the node itself, into a dictionary and assigning it to an ID. Um, why do we have to do this? It will become apparent later on. But just know that it's easier to make two dictionaries with very similar content that are reverse. So we can use them to reverse lookup. So in a ready function, obviously, we just want to randomize for new maps, um, get a call to our a cruiser, connect the signal that we're done moving to done moving the cruiser. And then obviously, we want to have a function called make map. What are we going to do in make map? Well, obviously, uh, for make map, we're going to want to place points from a point map. Obviously, that's something we want to do. We're going to want to connect the points on the map, and we're going to get into what this two is later on. We're going to want to check if the left and right are connected. Obviously, we're going to want to update. I'll get to what update is in a second. And then we're going to place a cruiser on the leftmost point. The reason I added these yields here is because if we don't add them later on, we're going to see what the issue is. But at the moment, that's the basic flow. Place points, connect points, are the left and right connected, and then place the player on the leftmost point. Sounds simple enough. So let's get into placing points from the map. Placing points from the map is actually very simple. If you think about it, and I'm just going to leave this code here if, or if you want to pause and, you know, uh, figure out what it's saying. But essentially what we're saying is we have nodes, right? We have like, I remember our uh, one with the, like the nine squares over here. We have our, uh, we have a node. These are the point maps. So this is point map one, point map one, point map two, right? We have the one with the X across, not line, but we have the one with the X, right? We're basically saying take take whatever like information is in here and just copy paste it into our game scene. Uh, this is the game. So that's what we're saying. Well, how do we say that? Well, we should first make a constant up here saying, or you can make a be a variable, whatever you want. I just chose to have it as a constant because you know this is not going to be changing at all for a fact throughout the entire runtime. So point maps, or you can actually make it a variable. So what are we going to do? Well, we're first going to, and I'll be hiding stuff. We're going to ask point map. Uh, we're going to ask the point maps array which is just a bunch of, which is an array of all the point maps we've made so far. We're going to ask it, could you grab a random one? Okay. We're going to add child to point map, right? So we're going to add, uh, we're going to add. Uh, so basically what we're going to, if we're going to do runtime, uh, what we'd be doing is we'd be adding this point map to our, you know, map over here. And we're going to be saying for point map, for point in the point map. Uh, so we're going to be saying for each point in here. So for each point, right, for each point over here, we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to create our own version of it, right? And that's exactly what this point uh, uh, object over here was. So this is what we're going to be interacting with. These positions are just placeholder positions for them. So that's kind of confusing. These position to these are just indicating the position. Could we have done it with an array? Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense looking back. We could have just used an array where we had these positions lined up in a vector, like a bunch of vector twos holding the position. But I feel like this is a lot easier for a level designer, you know, being able to modify stuff and moving them by hand, placing them, you know, hand, hand placing your positions and then going through your code and then saying uh, for each point, you know, we're going to make a new copy of it, right? But we're going to set it to the exact same position over here. And then we're going to remove child. So if we run our code at the moment, what we're going to get is basically a map. And if you're wondering why they don't look the same as point map one, well, we actually have this extra function here called random amount to add, which just adds an extra amount. It's like a, just returns an extra, uh, it just returns like a vector two that's a uh, extra amount to add. And we have a variable called margin. Of course, we can just add margin up here. And if you lower the margin, if you lower the margin to five, right? And then you click R for restart, you can see that we get like very similar maps. But if you increase it to like something like 50 or, you know, I think 25 might look a little bit better. You can see that 
you know, we get maps that are, you know, fairly, fairly different. Uh, and obviously, if you have the more points, point maps you have, uh, the more uh, uh, crazy your maps would look like when you're actually generating them. But you can see over here, we're getting something that kind of looks like what we had in the beginning, right? We have our points laid down and, you know, everything's working A-OK. -okay. And obviously, when we have, when we're going to be connecting everything up, you can see these two are going to be much more likely to be connected or these two are... We can see that these two are much more likely to be connected as compared and as compared to something like this one over here or this might be connected versus as in a different map where this one will be very likely to be connected or i'm just trying to find an example where this one is over here and this one is on the left so over here we can see this one would be connected this one would not be very likely to be connected and so on so forth we will be seeing when we actually connect points on the map which is where we're going to next so what are we going to be doing with connecting points Okay, I've already hand placed some points over here, uh, just for ease of understanding. And by the way, if you don't want to use point maps, uh, like I have done up here, then you can obviously just um, not call this function. For example, over here, I've hand placed some points and I want to use these at all the time. I just want to use these ones, you can always just uh, uh, tell Godot, uh, or you can just always tell the program, hey, I don't want to use the, the point map, obviously, just don't click just don't run the function place points on map, but we can always run connect points on map. And obviously I'm going to uncomment update here because we need that in, a, in it later later on. So what's going to, what's going on in the connect points on map function? Uh, let's, well, let's see. Well, first of, first of all, we're going to want to set up our dictionaries. Uh, these dictionaries up here that I was talking about. Yeah, we're going to want to set them up. Why do we want to set them up? Well, it's going to be obvious in a second. Obviously when I'm, when we print, uh, and we're going to want to print a uh, dict of Points. We're going to want to print these. We're going to see that in a second. But well, basically, what we're asking Godot to do right now is we're going to say for each point in point. In, so obviously, we're going to say if for point and get children. So we're going to be looking over here. We're going to be grabbing all of these guys. We're going to be saying for each point, right? We're going to get a point ID. How do we do that? Well, we could just use a random number generator. We can just count sequentially in this for loop. But we can always use A star. And we're going to ask A star, A star 2D, can you get us a point ID? Get get, a get available point ID. Well, what will, what will it return? It will just return the next available point ID with no point associated with it. Well, so how does A star know how to give us a point? Well, this A star object itself that we're using, which we're calling over here, it's kind of like a brain. And it remembers all the points and it remembers all the connections. And we can ask it, can you give us a number that doesn't have any points? If we ask uh, Godot to print out the point IDs, it's just going to be 1 to 8 because that's how we're assigning the points and to their IDs. And then we're going to obviously add uh, to our dictionary of points. We're going to use the key and values. Okay, so let's go understand dictionaries for a sec. Okay, we're going to make a quick pit stop and we're going to learn about dictionaries. We're going to be learning about a very simple data structure called a dictionary. It has a key and has a value. As you can see over here, we have two different keys and they have the same value. That's possible. But what's not possible is the same key. And actually, that was a bad example. What's not possible is the same key, different values, because we're going to be able to look stuff up with let me just get rid of that mess, but we're going to be able to look stuff up. Let me just change this as well. We're going to be able to look stuff up in our dictionary, dictionary of text to numbers. We're going to be able to look stuff up by actually using dot, so dot pp. So if I was able to print uh, print this, I would get limau what. But if I was going to, you know, you know, if I wanted to use a, a variable over here, like, I don't know, some text, um, and obviously some text is a another vari a variable, which actually it has the words node 33. Hint, hint, this is actually what we're going to be doing to find our uh, positions and points on our map. If we run that, we're going to get, oh my God, which is exactly what the value for node colon 33, 33 was. And it's a very easy way for us to be able to store some bit of information, some bit of information, whatever that would be, like Lamawa, oh my God, lol, or the number three. And we're able to associate it with another sort we're going to be able to associate it with some sort of value that we know. What's the importance of this? Well, we're going to see. When we go over here and we run our connecting points, we can see we get our two uh, dictionaries. Let me just copy these. Uh, copy. And obviously over here, you can see we get our uh, printed version of our points. And obviously I was incorrect. We get it to six. One. Um, yeah, that actually makes sense. So zero. Oh, there's also no point one. Where do, oh, point. Oh, yeah. This is a point one. Okay, so there's seven points and it would be six. Okay, whoops. So as you as you can see over here, we actually get our IDs printed out. So point IDs. But we're going to be focusing on a dictionary for one second. So as you can see over here, we have our dictionary of IDs, right? And the dictionary of IDs will be able the dictionary of IDs will let us search a point and get its corresponding ID, as you can see over there. And our dictionary of points will let us use a certain ID, whatever ID we want, for example two, three, four, six, whatever we want. And we're going to be able to get the position or this node itself. We're physically storing 
the information of this node. Um, we're, we're physically storing, we are physically storing what this node is and what ID it's associated with. And then we're going to be storing the ID and then we're going to be associating with the node. We're going to see where this comes in handy in just obviously when we're connecting these points, right? What we, what do we want to say? Well, we obviously want to, well, if we're going to connect the points, we're obviously going to have to examine each individual point. How are we going to do that? Well, we can just say four, we can just say four point ID in, uh, a star dot get points, right? Uh, what, how do I know this function exists? A so control click, it returns an array of all the points. Um, how, what, what does it mean by all points? It, it really means it returns an array of the ID of the points. And we can actually test that out. Uh, say print point ID, and we can even print uh, a star dot get uh, points. Because you can see in the previous example, or the previous line of code, we actually do a star dot add point, point ID, and then point global position. So if we run this real quick, we can see that we get an array of point IDs and then we just print out each point. We're going to want to be able to get the point position. So we can obviously just ask uh, a star dot get point position because it stores the position when we're adding a point over here. So we, a star dot add point, we have ID position and weight if you wanted to. And we can see over here, we're just adding uh, this position as well. And we're going to be getting it back here. Why do we need this position? Well, we need to compare it with all the other points a star has. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we have a map of points, right? We have a map of points and we're going to be visiting each point. We're going to be looking at this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And we're going to be asking, okay, when we're looking at this one, we're going to look at all the other points and we're going to compare distances, right? We just want to get an array of distances for all the other points. How do we do that? Well, well, first off, we can start off by making an array of points and an array a distance of those points. We can always make a loop saying for second point ID in a star dot get points again. And if that second point ID is not equal to our own point ID, then we're going to want to calculate the distance of that second point to the first point. What does that mean? Or what does this block of code look like? So read it line by line for second point ID in a star dot get points. If that second point ID is not equal to this point ID that we're looking at currently, then we're just going to get our second point position. And how do we do that? Well, we can obviously say di dictionary of points, second point ID dot global position. Or if you wanted to, um, you could do a star dot get point position point, uh, what get point position of the second point ID that works as well. In fact, that's better. Uh, and then we're going to be just calculating the distance squared from uh, this point ID over here to this second point ID. So that looks like something like we're, we're currently examining this one and we're going to be calculating the distance from here to here. And we're storing that into an array, which is a dictionary of points. And we're just going to be associating the array of point that it's with at the moment. And then we're going to be doing the same for the next point. So we're going to be calculating the distance from here to here. We're going to be calculating this distance and we're adding it to a, an array. And at the same time, we're making a note of uh, which ones we looked at when. Then of course we want to sort the dist uh, we want to sort them. So how we're we going to sort the distances? Well, distance of points dot duplicate. We're going to make a copy of the array. We can't just do something like this, uh, or we can't just do something like this where we set it equal to because that creates some mutations with the array. It's just easier to use duplicate. Returns a copy of the array. That's all we really need. And we're going to sort it. Uh, sorting. We're sorting the distances. So if we just right now print, uh, if we print out uh, distance of points distance of point and then we're going to print out uh, print uh, the sorted distances of points sorted. Of course, I have to do it below it's sorted distance of points, we're going to be seeing that Yeah, we have the distances over here. Uh, okay, it, it's just returning it for all the um, all of them that uh, are available. But as you can see over here, if we take these last two pairs, we can see that we have a bunch of distances, right? But this one is sorted in order. And I'll, of course, I can always uh, and of course, I just added a small uh, helper to uh, help us understand. I just added a, a bit of code to help us understand which points uh, are we talking about. So as you can see over here, the sixth point, uh, which, whichever point that is, it's looking at whatever. Uh, so example, let's say this is point six. What's point six? Point six is looking at all of these uh, nodes and it's asking, what are the distances? So I can only assume this lar largest distance is the one that's over here or somewhere one of these points and then it's looking at the distances between them and it's assigning a value to them obviously calculating the distance and then it's going to sort them once we have the sorted distance right once we have the sorted distance we can do four i in number of points to connect with right remember this number two over here that's how many points we want to connect to uh because when we're looking at a, a sort of a point map over here when we want to connect points uh we have to ask ourselves a question how many points do we want to connect to do we want to connect to every single point there is? Or do we just want to go haywire and connect to every single point? 
like that or do we want to you know selectively connect it you know maybe one maybe two points we have to that's the question we have to ask ourselves and we can obviously randomize that but i think a healthy connection is two points obviously you want to make the player have a decision maybe sometimes it'll be one sometimes it'll be three depending on how many points it's able to connect with but we're just going to be connecting with two at the moment and we're going to be doing uh we're going to be doing something a little bit wacky so at the moment we're currently printing our distance of points our, our array of points and then we're going to be connecting uh, printing the sorted distance and we're going to be using point id2 for an example um this might not make sense but just bear with me i'm trying to show as you can see over here we have uh we can just associate there we go so essentially what happened was we have these distances of each point so each point id correlates to a point remember so each point over here has a, a certain distance associated with it and then we sorted the distances so right now what we have is we have to be able to look for this number in this. We have to be able to look for, and this is the sorted array, by the way. We have to be able to look for the shortest distance in the sorted array. We have to look for that number in the unsorted array. We have to be able to grab its ID. So obviously this is zero, 01. This is the first index. And we have to be able to grab that point or that uh, point ID, whatever it could be. And that's how we'll be able to connect the shortest point. I feel like that explains it well. So for var index to use, and this uh, roundabout way I uh, just explained is easily done by in our distance of points, right? We're, in our distance of points over here, we're going to be looking for finding the sorted distance, and we're just going to be sorting by i, obviously because um, this will sh uh, sh um, obviously this will be like zero one, and we're going to be getting the zeroth index. So whatever zero is over here, um, zero the zeroth index obviously, and we're going to be looking for, uh, we're going to be looking at the zeroth, the first, second, depending on how many points we want to connect, we're going to be looking at the zeroth one, and we're going to be asking where is it inside of the di the distance array that's not sorted, and we're going to return, get an ID, which is obviously index to use, and then we're going to be using that index, we're going to be using that index of currently closest point is an integer in our we're going to be using that ID of the currently closest point. We're going to be able to get the ID of the currently closest point by looking at the um, index or, or the index where this sh sh the shortest distance is or the distance that we want to look for based on this uh, sh sorted array. And we're going to be using this ID of the currently closest point and we're going to be connecting that current point that we're looking at to the ID of the currently closest point. How do we know our points are actually connected? How do we know our points are actually connected? Well, we can easily just draw a line with the draw function. But before I explain that, we have to just do one thing, and which is at our ready function, we have to make sure that we say our map is done after we make map and obviously update. Uh, we can always just say make map is practically done over here, or we can say make map is done after all these steps have happened, and then we can update the map. That works as well, and that would be preferable. And what we're basically saying is, if the a star and map done object or if a star and map done are true so if a star object exists still and the map done object is uh, if the map done boolean is true we're going to go for point in a star dot get points which is simple which is very similar to what we did up here right four point and get uh children four point id and a star dot get points uh four point and a star dot get points same idea we're going to again we're going to do for connection in a star dot get points uh for connection in a star dot get point connections because we've already connected them up here right we're going to, we've already connected, uh, we've already connected the points together, the ones that are closest to each other. We're going to be t saying, get their positions, right? Get the ones that are connected to each other, get their positions and draw a line between that X and Y and then the connected points X and Y and just set a color to it. Forget what this two is for. I believe it's, yeah, with, and then an anti-alias, false, true, whatever you want. And as you can see, we get a setup that's connected. If you wanted to have more connections over here, for example, if you wanted three, then you could have more connections. If you wanted five connections, you could have five connections. But just be careful. If you overdo the number of connections uh, between your points, for example, if you wanted 50, it's going to be like, I don't have 50 points to connect. So just something you have to be aware of. Um, I, I find that doing one isn't good. It just like creates these strands. Yeah, it's not the best. But having two, right? So one, two, one, two, one, two. And you might be wondering, hey, this has three. You're lying to me. No, this point just decided to connect to these two. This point might can decide to connect to these two. It all depends on uh, how Godot wants to connect them up. And as you can see over here, if we just uh, uh, get rid of these points that we use as our demo and we go back to placing points from our point map, you can see that when we run it, we have a system set up where we can connect points and we can create these webs kind of. Now you might be saying, hey, look, sometimes they don't connect left and right. 
Well, we can make sure that you left and right are connected. How do we make sure left and right are connected? Making sure the left and right and connect is connected is actually very simple. But the thing is, we just have to create a couple of helper functions because, and we have to define a couple of things because when we, when we mean the left and right are connected, it means that we want to be able to go from the leftmost point to the rightmost point every single time, no matter what. So what does that mean? Well, we have to be able to identify the leftmost point and the rightmost point. Um, and obviously, obviously you can see over here that I'm saying this is the leftmost point. Well, according to the corner, this would be the leftmost point because it's the closest to it. Or if I was starting in the middle over here, we have to identify a starting position and an end position. Because English is left to right, I guess that's why we want to have the leftmost point as starting and the right as the ending as the same as in FTL. But I'm pretty sure in some games or some languages, you go right to left and that might be your starting position. So we have to identify an ideal starting position and a right position that we want to consider the ending. So we need to go up here and we have to define those variables and we have to just define where is the ideal start and the, the rightmost position that we want to work with. Then we have to go back to our, our, our left and right connected and we have to make a function for get the closest point passed in. Uh, and this and this is very a very simple uh, function for get closest point passed in. Basically, we're asking it to loop over all of the points, and we're asking it uh, whatever position two D we passed in, just get the distance squared from each point, and then uh, return the one that's the maximum. So how does it work? So we're obviously starting with the maximum distance, which is infinity. A uh, point to return is just a placeholder, and we're going going to do four point and get children. Figure out the distance. If that distance is less than the max distance, so obviously the first one will be. So essentially what we're doing is we have a bunch of points. We have a bunch of points. We're going to be looping over them and we're going to be asking ourselves, uh, what is the distance between them? So the, currently it's infinity, right? Infinity, uh, which is this INF, uh, which is INF, which is infinity, uh, which is a really large number. Uh, we're basically going to be asking it, hey, uh, could you figure out what is the distance between you and Point one. Well, it's obviously less than infinity. Let's say it's 10. Uh, so this is scratched off and now it's the shortest distance is then 10. Uh, the shortest distance is 10 now. And the next point is eight. So obviously if distance is less than max distance, if the distance we just calculated is less than the max distance, then yes, we're going to make sure we set it to eight. So now the shortest distance is eight. We go to the next point and what is it? It's going to be like, I don't know, 12. So obviously we're not going to be changing this. Go to the next point. Let's say that's six. So they ask, scratch out eight. Now we're going to six. Six is the shortest distance. Uh, and then we go to, I don't know, let's say this is 15 or something. So the shortest distance is six. We're going to be saving that point to return. What is the point that we're going to be returning with this function, which is we're returning a node 2D. We're going to be returning that point that was closest to us. And we're going to be sending it back up here to the leftmost point. Uh, long winded explanation of trying to say how to find what is closest to the ideal start position. Ideal start position is kind of like over here ish. Um, whoops, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like over here ish kind of, uh, and we're just trying to figure out who, how, and what is the closest thing to it. And we're, obviously we want to find the point ID that is closest to it. So left point ID. Now that we have the leftmost point, because we were able to find it, we have to get its ID. And this is where the dictionaries come in. So obvi obviously over here, we have the, we have the point itself. Like we have, if we go to our point map generator, we have the physical location of the point. We know exactly what the point is. We just don't know its ID because we didn't save the ID onto our point, which is obviously a very good idea, but um, I didn't build a tutorial like this. And that's probably an extension and a lot easier to do, but uh, to just, but we don't have the point ID. We just know what point it is. Hmm. That's a bit of an issue. Well, what can we do? Well, we can always just ask our dictionary of IDs, which by the way is returning the ID. We can pass in the leftmost point and it will return the ID of that point. So essentially what we did is we asked Godot, uh, get a random position, find the point that's closest to it, and then look in the dictionary that we created earlier. We're, we're going to pass in the point and then we want the ID of that point. What can we do with this ID? Well, we can obviously just ask if A star, if the, the left and right are not connected, just restart the scene, or you can clear everything and make a map again, whatever you want. I just find get tree, uh, reload current scene works. And you can see over here that uh, we'll just print out, print out uh, wasn't, uh, was not a good map over here. And you can see over here that uh, sometimes when we restart the scene, we will eventually, hopefully get some text saying wasn't a good map uh, somewhere, or maybe it should be in uh, when we're using this. As you can see over here, once we got rid of the extra print statements, you can see that many times there is not a good map and it just restarts and recreates a map. 
from scratch because we want to make sure the left and right most points are connected. So we're just going to collapse some of these functions because we're done with them. And now what do we have left? We have to we have to place the cruiser on the leftmost point. How do we place the cruiser on the leftmost point? Well, again, we can just ask for the the leftmost point. And then this is just some extra fancy stuff that I did once, but you can essentially just do this cruiser dot set pause um, left most point dot global position. Uh, you can ignore this for a sec, but essentially what we're asking is uh, for pl place cruiser on the leftmost point or whatever the whatever happens to be closest to this middle left part. Just place the cruiser over there. We just place just happen to place the cruiser over there and when we run it obviously you can see we just setting the position of the cruiser to whatever point happens to be on the left side or whatever is closest to the point we defined up here at the beginning which is ideal start position which is zero by 300 which is actually over here now that i think about it or whatever is closest to this point and as you can see it follows through with that the extra code i have over here for is instance valid has methods call is just very um safe way to make sure that if anything happens the game doesn't crash uh, you don't need this extra stuff. I mean, this works perfectly fine, but I just included it for safety. Okay, so we have our setup. We have the cruiser, the player on, on the map, and we have the points connected. How do we get to moving it? Be able to move the cru uh, the player, cruiser, whatever you want to call it. We have to be able to detect a click, and we have to be able to move once the click has happened. So obviously, go to part. We can go to our project settings. We can uh, make a action called click, which is just the mouse press, and we're going to be calculating the distance between. Um, all the points so for example four point in get children uh, we're just going to be calculating the distance uh, between all the points so for example if we go over here and we just create another point map like this uh, obviously when we click a point we're obviously not clicking the exact center of the point we have we're clicking like somewhere around it kind of we're trying to figure out which point it was so if I click here we don't want the game to respond if I click here we don't we don't want the game to respond if I click here we want the game to respond with this point how do we do that well we could check every single point and we can check where our mouse position was where our mouse position was uh, which is right over here uh right over here and we can check the distance between all these points which is kind of a roundabout way of doing it and then we can see w if it's within a certain margin or sort of within a certain radius uh which is what we have over here which is the margin over here which is calculated by how far this position 2d is from the center of this point whatever that distance is if it falls within that threshold then we're a-okay with making sure uh, this point was clicked and we can move the cruiser or the player or we can do something with that information once we know that this is a place that the player wants to move and was clicked in. Okay, how do we go about doing that? Well, uh, for point in get children, calculate that distance. If that point margin is greater than the distance that we clicked or if we, it, it's essentially saying if that distance is less than point margin as well, that works as well. If that distance that we calculated, if this distance that we calculated or this distance, whatever is is within the threshold, within the threshold for us to click in, then move cruiser to this point. And how do we move cruiser to this point? How do we move cruiser to this point? Well, we have to pass in what point we want to move to. And then we just call cruiser not move to. Why? Because in the cruiser, um, in the cruiser uh, scene, we already have a function over here called move to. And it's basically saying uh, start from the global position, go to the position we just passed in and do it within a trans cubic ease out whatever fancy stuff you want to do and as you can see over here i can click but if i click towards a point it moves but now we just have a object that moves along and happens to be following the paths but you know we can skip around and be evil like that how do we make sure it moves to points that we are connected to at the moment well we got to figure that one out so instead of looking for a point in get children which is all the points we have to look at the points connected to the cruiser point Okay, that's a bit of an issue. How do we calculate that now? So essentially what we're asking is we're asking Godot. We're asking the game. We have a point. We're at a point. We have to be able to look at all the points we're connected to and only be able to look at those ones, not every single one of them. How do we do that? So obviously the way that we're going to be able to accomplish this, the way we're going to be able to accomplish this is very simple. Well, because we're looping over stuff over here, we have to be able to make sure that the thing that we return from this function is also an array. So we have an array of connected points to the cruiser point and we're returning that currently it's empty so we will not be getting any movement if we run the scene because there are no points to loop over of course but we can solve that so obviously we have to ask ourselves what are the points that we're trying to get the connection of and that's obviously the closest point passed passed in uh we'll, we'll get the closest point passed in to this function which is the cruiser global position we have to get that point that we're trying to connect to we got to get the id of it which is um we're just passing in the point. We're getting the ID of it. Very simple. So now once we have the ID that we're trying to get, or we once we have the point that 
we're trying to get the idea of, which is obviously the cruiser point that we're on at the moment, we have to be able to ask ourselves, are they connected? So once we figure out which point we're trying to get the ID of, which is obviously what we calculated over here, we figured out what is the ID that we're trying to get the connection of. A star actually has a very helpful function called get point connections to the ID of that we're trying to get connections of. So A star literally tells us, hey, buddy, there are some points over here that are connected to the point that you're currently interested in. So A star literally just told us in R of point IDs that are connected to the main point, it's telling us that these three are connected. And if we just actually, you know, why don't we just print that? Print R of uh, points that are connected to the main point. And you can see over here, uh, nothing happens. Oh yeah, nothing. Oh yeah, we can see that only point one and two are connected. So what can we do with that information? Well, well, what we can do with that information is we can actually return because we have because when we're clicking over here, we're actually looking at points. So we have to make an R of connected points. We have to just convert our dictionary. Uh, we have to convert the ID back into a point, which is what we're using this dictionary of points for. Remember, it returns the point. We search with the ID. We're we're passing in a point where we're using the key over here of a of a ID, and we want the value of what point it was. And that's exactly what we're making with this array over here. And we're just returning that array of connected points. And as you can see over here, we can click, but we cannot click on things we are not connected to. Uh, as you can see, it just updates and it works like a charm. So that's actually the end of the tutorial. Like that's all we need to make a functional uh, faster than light uh, type map uh, system. If you want to add a line, which I had at the beginning, it's not that hard either. Uh, and just in case if you wanted to, you can have yield to get tree uh, idle frame, which I, I think is helpful. Uh, to have a yielding system over there. But how do we add a line? That's a good question. So obviously, when we're adding a line, we have to make a variable called line, we obviously have to get reference to that line, because we're looking at this node, we have to get parent and get line 2d. And obviously, when we're working with the line, we have to look at the function where we're getting points connected to the cruiser point. Why? Because that's the one where it actually matters, we have to figure out which ones are we looking at. And the way the line 2d works is that if we just try, um, if we just tried and you know, setting uh the points of actually you know instead of me explaining it let's just fail our way through it so what we're trying to say is we want to actually just say line uh you want to say line dot points um and we're just looping over stuff so i guess um id uh, id works or if we can if you wanted to you can do i var i i plus equals um i equals zero and you just do i plus one plus equals one and uh, four point four points and i right we're just going to say uh, we're just going to set it equal to uh, um, R of connected points I dot dot global position. And essentially what happens is we get a system where we, we our line doesn't really match up, as you can see over here. Why is that? Um, and by the way, if this doesn't make sense, it's because I'm just trying to rush through what it, what you might do if you thought about it for a couple seconds, is every time we want to set the line, we have to clear it. We have to create a very a systematic way of adding points, which is we have to add the point, which is the position that we're trying to add the point of, which is the R of positions. And then we also want to, and then we also have to pass in at what position we add the point in. As you can see over here, these are the positions where the line point is passed in, and we can just add them in uh, incrementally. But we also have to add back the center position where we are looking at currently, or where the, the player is, because that's essentially uh, where we have to keep everything based off of. So how line the line 2d were node works kind of is when we have the line 2d node here and we ask it to add these points right it's going to just connect those points together like this it's going to connect them what we want to do is we want to tell the line 2d node uh, we have these points here but we want you to connect them like this we're going back to the start and we're connecting them obviously because i'm a human i'm obviously making them look like fingers but when you're look, telling the computer to create the line we're creating a line once and then we're literally just creating the line on top of that again and we're going back, and then we're going back, and we're going back, we're going to the new point, and then we're going back, and then we're going to the new point, and then going back. And obviously, then it would look like the points that were connected. And then this is essentially what it would look like. How do we do that? So set line 2D to some lines, uh, which is a function that we can call over here in figuring out which points we are trying to connect to. And obviously, we're at, uh, passing in a R of positions, which is the same as R of connected points. And we're just trying to figure out the center position, which is uh, points to get connection of, right, which is where the cruiser is, uh, which is the center position, and then we're just going to be passing in points. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm commenting this line out because you can see over here, we're still not getting the functionality if we do not include the center position each time. And as you can see over here, it works, but it's kind of delayed. It's on the point that we were just on, unless I click somewhere else, right? If I click over here, 
it, or if I click over here, it updates. So essentially we want to call this function when the player is done moving. And how do we do that? Well, over here, it's kind of obvious. Well, it's kind of obvious that when the issue is that we're getting it kind of like out of, out of sync, we kind of have to update it. Well, when the player or the cruiser is done moving, we have to update. So how do we do that? Well, we could just create a function over here. Uh, so, or we can just connect the signal of when the, when the cruiser is done moving. Essentially what we want to do is we want to, you know, uh, points connected to the cruiser point and we'll just be able to run this entire function. So when the cruiser is done moving, it will update. And the issue is um, we don't want it to show, or I guess if you wanted to keep it like this, you could um, where it shows, but um, if you wanted to, you could always just say uh, when, when clicked uh, and we have a point that we want to go to line dot hide. And then once we're done moving, we can do line dot show. And when we have that set up, you can see that we have our everything working. And of course, if you wanted to be there at the beginning, obviously I'm just adding on things that you could figure out yourself, but I'm just explaining because I'm making the tutorial and it's easier to explain right now. But um, when everything's done being set up uh, at the end of this function, we can obviously just call the exact same thing, uh, line, uh, not line dot show, but we can just call this function, which is uh, done moving cruiser, technically. We're done moving cruiser, if you think about it. Uh, and uh, it will basically run the exact same setup. Or actually, it's not the same because the cruiser isn't done moving at that point in time. But we can just run this uh, uh, points connected to the cruiser point when we're done. And as you can see, it's ki kind of out of sync at the moment. Why? Because it should be after the cruiser is placed on the leftmost point. And now it works. Uh, what, why doesn't it work up here? Well, what actually happens is this function takes such a long time to run that this one happens next without this finishing. And that's a bit of an issue. So we actually have to place it over here where placer is on the leftmost point. And then once the placer, or once the cruiser is on the leftmost point, then we will sequentially run this line of code. And that's how we get a, a faster than light system working. If none of this made sense, that is a-okay because the code is online and you can dissect it and tear it apart and rip it to whatever you want. But I feel like no one has made a tutorial on this in the Godot community. And I might have just made the worst tutorial ever. Even I, there are many times where I was thinking, wow, this is such a horrible explanation. But this is the first attempt. Hopefully if it's on YouTube, if it even goes on YouTube, I might re-record this, who knows. But this has taken me a long time, about an hour. And I'm kind of hungry now. So if this helped, I let me know if it helped. If it was confusing, let me know. I will remake the tutorial. That is not a problem. Or maybe you might not even be, and you might not, uh, you might not even be seeing this tutorial because it was just that bad. But I feel like this is a, step in the direction of trying to make sure that people can build bigger and better things or slightly more complicated things. Because I'm just teaching like at that point when I was just drawing all this math stuff out, I was teaching basic computer science stuff, not Godot stuff. And those are my closing thoughts because I am actually very tired. Oh my gosh, if I wasn't recording that and I'm tired now, I'm going to go take a bit of a rest and hopefully that helped. If it didn't, let me know and I will try to re-record it. But that's all. Goodbye. It's just that it's always the same map. <clears throat> ah. <sighs> I almost died there. For example, over here, you can see we always have the same map. Very point, get point. I swear to God, there was a get point ID. Not crazy. Get point ID, get point ID. Get point. Oh, get ID. When a dictionary can just handle everything. Shit, that was a horrible explanation of Dick 2. These are just here because I cannot... Uh, we could just have like our red square, a uh, red square. Okay, we're not going to be doing red square like that. R red. Okay. Um, hello. My cursor seems to have gone stupid. Okay, there we go. My cursor is back. 